The intensity level is on the rise as we near the midpoint of the 2021 NWSL Challenge Cup. Gotham FC's origin story culminated in three points as Paige Monahan proved to be the hero they needed, while the North Carolina Courage earned three points of their own thanks to the efforts of Merritt Mathias. It's a battle for first place in the East Division between Gotham and the Courage. Secret Deodorant proudly presents the NWSL Challenge Cup coming to you tonight from MSU Soccer Park at Pitzer Field in Montclair, New Jersey. Alongside NWSL veteran and Olympic bronze medalist Kaylin Kyle, I'm Joe Malfa. Match day two of four for each of these teams, and we have a top of the table clash, Kaylin. I mean, this is why, I say it all the time, why this tournament is so exciting. I'm absolutely delighted that the NWSL brought it back for this season because it really is anyone's tournament. I mean, obviously we saw last year with Houston Dash, but look at the standings right now. North Carolina uh, sitting in first with three, obviously alongside Gotham and Washington. So it's set to be an absolutely fantastic finish. And on the flip side, in the West as all these teams vie to play on May 8th. Total control for the Portland Thorns. It really is. And, and I mean, we've seen the Portland Thorns and just how they're playing. They're absolutely a, a force to be reckoned with. Incredible going forward. Defensively extremely sound. And that was without a lot of their national team play, their players. Now, as the international window has closed, reinforcements for both Gotham and North Carolina. Reinforcements, to say the least, but this woman, Carly Lloyd, I mean, 301 appearances for her national team. This is obviously going to be her first appearance for Gotham since 2019. She can really do it all. She is going to be the conductor in this midfielder. She's going to be a threat moving forward. So for North Carolina, can they shut down Carly Lloyd today? And on the flip side, for Gotham, it's going to be all about shutting down Lynn Williams, who excelled in last year's Challenge Cup. <laughs> excelled to say the least. She excels with the women's national team, but it's her acceleration that sets her apart. I mean, her pace, her power, her precision, but her ability to score goals at a high rate is absolutely alarming. So again, two players to look out for today in that attacking third. Plenty of talent all around the field. Very excited to get this one going, Kaylin. If either of these teams come away with all three points this Thanks. evening, you'd have to like their chances of representing the East division in May 8th final. Kickoff between Gotham and North Carolina just moments away here on Paramount Plus. Moments away from the action here in Montclair, New Jersey. Joe Malpa here alongside Kalen Kyle. We showed you Carly Lloyd and Lynn Williams coming back. Not the only internationals coming back for either of these teams, Kaylin. No, there's plenty of internationals coming back. I mean, we just look at the calibers. Obviously, O'Sullivan, a lot of these girls will slot into the starting lineup. I'll break that down for you in just a minute. But again, this is great that they're back, but it also gave, you know, women opportunity to get into the lineup to really prove themselves in the starting 11. But I am excited to see Lynn Williams lead this line. And then we look at in, or we look at New Jersey. I mean, Carly Lloyd coming back in first. They are going to lead this front line. So it's absolutely incredible that all these women are back because it really adds to the depth and the dynamicism of these teams. And with Carly Lloyd and Midge first back in the fold, they enter the 11 as well for Freya Coombe. Yeah, three changes to this Gotham FC team. Obviously playing with that diamond midfield. Carly Lloyd being the tip of that diamond. But then you look at the two front runners. Obviously, Monaghan, we saw her with the goal. And then Purse with her pace and her power to get behind this back line. It's going to be a dynamic front three in this match tonight. On the other side, North Carolina, we already mentioned Lynn Williams. Again, not the only international back in the lineup for North Carolina. No, this is an exciting front force to be reckoned with. I mean, the four, the box midfield going up against a diamond, it's going to be extremely difficult to break down. But who can break down Jess McDonald with her power to get behind the back four and Lynn Williams? Just about set to kick off here in Montclair, New Jersey. Two teams at the top of the table right now in the Eastern Division. Washington also has three points, but they've played two games. This is game number two for each of these teams. At the end of the night, if either team comes away with all three points, they have the inside track at making the May 8th title game, where it seems like they might join Portland, who has total control right now of the Western Division, but still plenty to be determined here in the 2021 NWSL Challenge Cup. Carly Lloyd back on the field for Gotham for the first time since 2019. A welcome sight for all the fans here today at Pitzer Field. 
Referee in charge today is Laura Rodriguez. Got them in there. Newly released blacks with the teal stripe diagonally down the front. And North Carolina in their all white road unis going from left to right. Pause now for a moment of unity as the players utilize their platform. Top of the table clash underway here in the 2021 NWSL Challenge Cup. These teams met last year in the Challenge Cup. It was the final matchup of the preliminary round. So they meet again here in group play. And if you look at the lineups, you, you go directly to the midfield. Obviously, with North Carolina, we all know Paul Riley loves to play with that box midfield. But then for Gotham, playing against that diamond. So where's the space on the width? And again, Merritt Mathias, absolutely brilliant performance versus Washington with that late game winner. Incredible for her, obviously missing last season due to the ACL. Looked like she hadn't skipped a beat. But then you add the players into these squads that were gone away on international break. O'Sullivan, she's really going to lead the midfield for this North Carolina. Paul wasn't uh, really happy with the performance of the midfield. Um, obviously, we saw Dabina going forward, getting into that final third. I thought she was brilliant. Um, so again, O'Sullivan slotting straight into the starting 11. And Carly Lloyd taking charge right away. Through ball in. The flag goes up. Take another look here as Carly Lloyd gets right into the action. She gets it further forward to Kawasumi, but a little bit too early on that ball, on the run, excuse me, on the back end of it. And early on in this match, we already see what Carly Lloyd can do. She gets into the mix, and she, she really is going to play with Kamasumi on that left-hand side and Lee, the rotation of those three, and Kujo just sitting in, screening off that back four, making it extremely difficult for North Carolina to break down. Merritt Mathias to get it back into action. She scored what turned out to be the game winner for North Carolina in their first matchup. That one came against Washington. The Spirit took a quick 1-0 lead in that one in the fourth minute. But North Carolina responded with three unanswered goals, two in the first half, one in the second half. Those goals were courtesy of Hamilton, McDonald, and then Matthias. Pressure high up the field from Purse, but back to Murphy. Down the flank for Williams, working on Lewandowski. End line in front and pouncing right to it is Haricic. Early on, you see right away just how dangerous Lynn Williams can be. Dangerous how Lynn Williams can be, but the internationals, we, we're looking on both ends of it. I mean, O'Sullivan getting on the ball early. We have, you know, Carly Lloyd slotting in there. And again, this is what I talked to you in our pre-match. The ability for not only Lynn Williams' pace to get behind defenders, but with the ability with her ball at her feet, having that confidence to take players on 1v1. Not a great ball into the box, but again, just coming back two minutes in, she's sure to clean the final third pass up. And that right away is up against Gina Lewandowski, who is no slouch. Two German Cups, one UEFA Women's Cup, and one Bundesliga title while she was at Frankfurt on plenty of title-winning teams. And this time, stepping over to clear things out, Mandy Freeman. Gotham playing their matches at the moment here at Montclair State University. They'll be getting into Red Bull Arena throughout the season. Quick pause in the action. Look at Freya Coombe, second year coach of Gotham FC. She is just excited to have a regular season. She couldn't wait for last year to begin, and then the pandemic arrives, and what was going to be her first season as a head coach in the NWSL turns into the Challenge Cup, the Fall Series. She cannot wait to get going in the regular season. I think everyone's just excited to be back on the field. Obviously have these fans in the stands. I was lucky enough to be at a match this weekend and it adds just so much to these players that worked so hard for all of us to just have a little bit of normality last season. Obviously us not being able to get into the stands to support these women. But again, just the ability to get people in, have the supporters there, just really adds this electric feeling being on this pitch. 
cut out. Lloyd taken down. That's Meredith Speck in the midfield today with Denise O'Sullivan defensively for North Carolina. And now, Kalen, you played in this Paul Riley midfield system. Break it down for us when we see the box midfield there on the lineup. What does it mean in terms of the tactics as the game goes along? It's extremely difficult to play and you have to be tactically switched on. You have to have that vocal communication. You have to have the cover and support. If one goals, you need to hold. So if Speck decides to bomb on, you have to have the ability of Mace or Dabinia to drop in and play that double pivot screen. Because if you don't, you, you're left vulnerable on that counter attack. Same can go for this diamond midfield. Both very vulnerable on that quick counter attack and on the width, on the space. Attempt at the quick counter attack here, but just too far for Jessica McDonald wearing the armband tonight for North Carolina as Didi Haracic gets it back into play. Beautiful night tonight here in northeastern New Jersey as Gotham FC unveils these kits to the home crowd. Kayla, I know you have plenty of connections around the league. <laughs> have, have you have gotten your hands on one of the Gotham kits yet? You know what? I haven't. I talked to McCall Zerboni, but she's also in size extra small, and I'm about a large now since I've retired. So I'll just wait until my bank account grows, and then I can purchase all of these amazing jerseys. There you go, because with that color scheme especially, oh, can't. kit after kit is going to be a hot item to grab. But again, it says a lot about the growth. I mean, we're seeing it in the WNBA, but the NWSL, just, just what they're putting into the programs, the training facilities, the, the, the pitches, the hotels now. So again, it says a lot about where this NWSL is going, and everyone is finally putting their money where their mouth is. Kawasumi. Center, Lloyd chests it down, but immediately in there, Skylar Debris. Lloyd playing at the top of that diamond tonight for Gotham. Again, in the lineup for the first time since 2019. McDonald checking deep under some pressure. Merritt Mathias has some time, finds feet. High pressure here from Gotham continues. Monaghan, last week's goal scorer, not giving Speck any room. Appeared as if Carson Pickett lost that one briefly in the sun, but recovers. Speck in for Dabinia. McDonald. On the far side, Lynn Williams just can't quite get to it. Always dangerous, always lurking. Three goals in last year's Challenge Cup. And you can see already early on this match, th this game will come down to the midfield battle. Obviously, the diamond midfield of what Gotham is playing, the box midfield of what North Carolina, it's a 4v4 in there. But again, it's that rotation of the double pivot screen and Cujo just being having that communication, just sitting in and screening off the front. Switch of the action to Matthias on the right side. Dabinia checks. Matthias. Inside, headed to Williams, and then cut out. Priest Didasco gets in there. Naomi Kawasumi, 2011 World Cup winner, sprays out wide for Monaghan. Last week's goal scorer for Gotham, but nobody on the end of it. Carson Pickett with some room to roam. Denise O'Sullivan back from her international duty with Ireland. Dabinia taken down. No call from Laura Rodriguez. Play on. And space the other way for Gotham. Look at the counter. Monaghan centrally. Carly Lloyd trailing. Still with it. Mitch Purse takes the shot. Rises over the bar. Purse holding her right ankle after this. We'll see if we can get a look here, Kaylin, at what happened. And, and hopefully nothing serious, obviously, early on into this match, could be, because you can see these international players of what they're adding into this, that attacking threat moving forward. Carly Lloyd popping off into the mil middle, helping this build up. Obviously, you see on the other side, O'Sullivan getting on the ball, getting stuck in. Dabinia, she wasn't missing for international duty, but again, getting on the ball, being dangerous in that final third. But notable players that are going to be also important. I was talking about the midfield, the, the box midfield compared to the diamond midfield. So really, where is your space on the flank? So it's your fullbacks that need to get involved in this game. Can they get forward? Can they create overloads in this midfield and add that extra player? 
Carly Lloyd getting involved plenty early on. Monahan. Space again down the flanks, as you mentioned, Kalen. In front. Nobody there. Stepping to it, Jennifer Cujo. So Dom Lee. Top of the box. Shot. That one's not going to trouble Casey Murphy from Naomi Kawasumi. And you can hear Freya Combe on the sideline saying, you got to get back in quicker. And this means when you're playing again, when these tight midfielders, you got to condense the space. Because there is so much space to be able to play wide, you can't give up both. You can't be able to have the ability to play through the team parts in the midfield. Give them the outsides because your numbers are centrally. Mitch Purse in space. So Dom Lee. We've seen Purse very active early on. And a nice step on the far side towards this attack. And we've seen Purse, like you said, you just alluded to, defensively doing the work, but offensively as well. You can just see her. She's just actually hobbled out of screen, so hopefully this ankle isn't anything too serious moving forward. She's a player that can do it at both ends mm -hmm. for this Gotham side. Flag goes up. That one out for a goal kick. A little bit too strong on the throw pair of homecomings of sorts for North Carolina on the back side, one of them being Casey Murphy in goal tonight. Attended Rutgers from Bridgewater Township, New Jersey. And then on the back line as well, Skyler Debris from Fairhaven, New Jersey. Bit of a legend in terms of high school here in New Jersey. Number 10 recruit in the state and a 2013 high school All-American. So those two happy to be back in familiar territory. Dabinia to McDonald, space in the box. Lynn Williams crashing in front, cut back. Dabinia saved by Heritage. Williams still with it, sends it back. Mace takes a deflection off of Dabinia and the crisis averted for Gotham. And Best this, opportunity of the night for North Carolina. And this is a, I, I spoke about it in our pre-match as well, how big the goalkeepers are in the NWSL. But again, this actually starts from a full back platform. Matthias getting into the attack, finding Dabinia popping off into that midfield and McDonald on this right-hand side, getting her head up, slotting this one across and Dabinia carrying on her run. So like I alluded to, fullbacks so important for this attacking threat on both sides. And from Haley Mace with that shot, playing a team that Traded her away, part of a trade back in the draft when she was taken second overall in 2019 by Sky Blue. Traded for McCall's Boney, so plenty of connections between Mace and this side she's against today. Speck keeps it alive, 50-50 ball, and Cujo caught a cleat on the knee. Late whistle from Rodriguez. Cujo always in the thick of things in the midfield. You look at her track record in last Challenge Cup and in the Fall Series. She led the Challenge Cup in fouls and missed one game in the Fall Series for yellow card accumulation. So if there is a scrum in the midfield, she's going to be a part of it. I will give her the benefit of the doubt because being a defensive midfielder, you're, you're cleaning up everyone else's mess. You're usually, you know, popping off the front, screening off the front, trying to get stuck into tackles. So again, she does the job well. I'm not going to say anything about yellow cards. It's okay to get a yellow <laughs> card every once in a while. Kawasumi in for Dorsey, wants it back, gets it back. Waiting for an option. Doesn't find one. Again, it's Cujo in the midfield. Williams puts her under pressure. Lewandowski is going to have to go all the way back. Haricic has to exit the box to clear that one as Williams gives charge. Dorsey turns on Mace. Kawasumi taken down. Play on, says Rodriguez. Lead to Lloyd. Carly Lloyd from distance. That type of player, always a threat. 
and I don't put that one in. I don't mind seeing this from Carly Lloyd because nine times out of ten, that's probably into the back of the net. But again, just the confidence of her. I, I don't want to age her because I feel like she's aging like a fine wine. I mean, if I could play at 38 years old, I'd absolutely be delighted. But she. The ability to play in tight spaces, get turned, and then to have the confidence. I mean, she doesn't lack any confidence, but to have a strike outside the box, this really sets the tempo early on in this match. Carly Lloyd just crossed the 300 cap threshold. The U.S. women's national team, one of three players to get past that number. In addition to Christine Lilly and a giveaway at the back almost from Harichich. Under pressure from McDonald. Gets rid of it, just as I was saying that Carly Lloyd, one of three with 300. Christine Lilly and Christy Pierce, the other two. Aracic almost gifted a goal right away there. You speaking about those stats literally gives me goosebump, <laughs> goosebumps. I think if I could have, you know, obviously I played a, a lot of games in the national team, but even one I would have been delighted. Never mind 300 games. I mean, it's absolutely incredible what she does for uh, women around the world, but really women's soccer right here in our own backyard. And she made her debut for the women's national team back in 05. And that includes a game in 2008, January 16th, 08. Is that a date that rings a bell, Kaylin? Say it again. January 16th, 2008. No. That was your debut for Canada. It came oh, in a game against the U.S. it was 4-0 loss. You had to bring that up on national <laughs> hey, television. I didn't say the score. No, did. You said the score. I was just saying that you debuted against the Carly Lloyd team. Yeah, and it you brings said back the score, bad not me. To be <laughs> fair, we, I don't think my time with the national team, we ever beat the, the Americans. We came close, but never beat them. I was careful not to say the score. I let you say that. Do not put words in my mouth. <laughs> Meredith Speck. Can't get it past Kawasumi as North Carolina tries to break down this Gotham defense. In the early going, North Carolina in charge of the possession. When these teams last met in last Challenge Cup, that was not the case. That came last July, and the possession was 58-42 in favor of Gotham. And I think a lot of that has to do with O'Sullivan slotting back into the midfield. Paul Riley wasn't happy with his midfield performance. He bases his team around the midfield because obviously playing the box is not easy to do. So again, you can kind of see them controlling it, getting good round of play. You can see obviously Dabinia popping back, trying to clean up, get, live on it a little bit, move the defense of this Gotham side. Just past a quarter hour gone, Joe Malfa here alongside Kalen Kyle. Top of the table clash between Gotham and North Carolina from MSU Soccer Park at Pitzer Field in Montclair, New Jersey. Temporary home here for Gotham before they head into Red Bull Arena. Matthias. Kawasumi there. She takes her space. Cuts in. Headed away. Kujo takes it down. After Freeman was able to cut out the attack. Now Mitch Purse with room to roll. As Paige Monahan takes it herself. Mitch Purse all alone. Purse. Off the hand and in. Mitch Purse back in the lineup, back on the score sheet for Gotham. And this is a huge, huge defensive error for North Carolina. They had the numbers back, they had the cover, they had the support. There was no need to dive into a player of the magnitude of Purse because of her power, the ability with her ball at her feet. But it's debris. Terrible defending. Again, this comes from a defensive transition. Gets her head up. Cujo finds the front runner. Ball to feet. Purse drives with her power. Ball at her feet, beating this first defender again. You have cover. You have support. You're a 2v1. There's no need to dive in. But Purse, absolutely brilliant from her to get this ball past the first defender and have the confidence and the pace just to slot this one home. 1-0 one early on in this game. Well done. She had Monaghan with her. She took that ball about 10 yards inside her own half of the field. As soon as she looked up, you got the sense she was taking it herself. But again, this comes from that defensive transition that I alluded to. When you play diamond midfield, when you play a box midfield, you have to make sure you're a man up on that transition. And Gotham were. They were 2v1. You can't dive in. Just be calm, be cool, get your midfielders back, collect the lines, and they just could not do that. But it's a great heads up play from Cujo in that defensive midfielder role to get her head up. And can I play forward? Can I find the free feet of my front runners? Now you get the few minutes that coaches talk about all the time. The first five after a goal is when you're most likely to score another or concede again. How will each of these teams respond? It's going to be a free kick here for Gotham. Purse did not score in five matches played all starts in last year's Challenge Cup. 
She did score one in the fall series in which she played all four games. So this her first ever Challenge Cup goal. And one she's not going to forget. I mean, it's an absolutely brilliant first touch to get past the defender and then just have the confidence because that's not easy to do. A lot of people say you should finish on breakaways, but, you know, you're always thinking where's the pressure coming from because you don't want to take a look over your shoulder. And then it's that 1v1 against a goalkeeper that comes out big and strong. Chance to add a second. Pujo to deliver. Lofts one in. Backside of the six. Carly Lloyd always dangerous in the air. Couldn't get to it, but does earn a corner for Gotham. Kerr still flexing that ankle mm -hmm. a little bit from the challenge we saw maybe eight, nine minutes ago, but it looked okay on the goal. She has a sore ankle, but she's like, I'm going to put my team up 1-0, maybe go for a sub around 45. Opportunity on the corner. Lofted in. Lloyd underneath it. How many times have we seen her score with her head? Not to be that time. North Carolina, they need to be switched on defensively. Just making, obviously, on the goal, defensive error, jumping in far too quick, far too early, not getting your seat, feet set. And then on defensive set pieces, who do you need to mark up in the box? Carly Lloyd. We've seen her so dangerous with both the national team in league play, absolute force on set pieces. So whether you have to put two on her, one in front, one behind, get touch tight, knock her off a little bit. But again, it's far too easy defensively. 39 goals in her NWSL career, 91 starts. And she has another 124 to her tally for the women's national team, including three in the World Cup final in 2015 against Japan. Naomi Kawasumi just dished out the ball there, was on the losing end of that one, but on the winning end of it in 2011. I wonder if the two of them chat about that every now and then. Happy that they each got one at least. 11 for Japan, 15 for the US. Don't ask me about 2011 either, all right? <laughs> North Carolina trying to respond. Williams with a bit of play on her own. Doing her best mid-person press and just cut through the defense, but not as much room to roam for Lynn Williams. Mace puts in a strong foot. Dabinia cleans up the mess. McDonald in space. Mace, Dabinia, Williams in the box. McDonald takes a deflection off of Cujo. Dabinia finds the bottom corner. We're back level here at Montclair State University. And it's sloppy defending on both ends, but it's just McDonald. I love this from her. Dabinia picking it up. She was, she was fantastic last game as well. And again in this game, popping off into that midfield, finding Jess McDonald, just rolling out to that right-hand side. Jess McDonald putting a cross in, sloppy clearance again. And it, this is what you want to see. You want to see players keeping involved. Sloppy in the midfield from Gotham. Win it here again. Dabinia getting on the ball, getting her head up, finding this one out wide. Where is the space? Out wide. Jess McDonald knows that, beats her defender 1v1, puts a cross in. Sloppy clearance, falls at the feet of an unmarked player of Dabinia. It's just, again, not good enough defensively. That first five I was talking about. Goal in the 18th minute for Gotham. Goal in the 23rd minute for North Carolina. And another quick response for them. They went down in the fourth minute against Washington. In the 10th minute, they tied it. So two quick responses, and Paul Riley's got to be happy with that. Not happy with the concession, but happy with the response in both cases. Did that wake them up? Williams to McDonald. Something on again. Dabinia streaking down the middle. McDonald with it. Look at Harichich across oh. Dabinia. Back to back for Dabinia. This game turned on its head in a matter of seconds. Now this is a goal, absolutely incredible. Paul Riley will be so happy with this finish because he talked about the midfield performance last match. It wasn't there. Well, it's here. Completely collapsed. And again, you see players like Mace dropping down. And then you see Williams getting on the ball. Where's the space again? I say it time and time again. Jess McDonald rolling outside to this right hand. But how about this ball into the box? This is precision. Keeps it on the ground. Sees, the, again, that late midfield run from Davina. And this is a well-deserved goal to put them in the lead, 2-1. Davinia twice in a couple of minutes. And the response from North Carolina, much of what we saw in game one. They scored three unanswered after Washington took an early lead. Two in rapid succession here. 
Almost 25 minutes gone in this one, and we've seen some very open play between these two sides. And it is, and it comes down to the midfield. When you play that diamond midfield, when you play that box midfield, all the players are in the middle of the park, all eight players, but good heads up play from Jess McDonald, rolling out wide on both of those goals because she knows that's where the space is. So moving forward, Dorsey needs to do a better job defensively. Drop in, tuck alongside your center back more and not give McDonald to have that space to play in. North Carolina taking some time now at the back. Freya Coom giving out the orders to Gotham. Looking to get back into this one. Carly Lloyd had an opportunity off the corner with her head to give them a 2-0 lead. And right after that, in a matter of moments, they go from that close to being up 2-0 to being down 2-1. And this game ha has more goals to come because of the amount of space, the amount of space on the wings because that condensed midfielder. So defense, like you said, they need to be switched on. They need to stay compact. You can hear both managers on the touchline saying, compact, condense the space, get your team parts tighter. Don't allow teams to play through you so easily. Cujo gets it forward in a lot of space. Carly Lloyd. Lofted it over the top, a long run for Monahan. She gets it into some space. Mitch Purse with her, plenty of space to take herself. Monahan in the front. I don't know if it went off of spec or if it went off of Purse, and the flag stays down. Whoever hit it, it's two to two, and this game wild in the first half hour. And I told you, this game is going to have a load of goals. And as we say that, a very late flag. A very, very late flag. It stays two to one, North Carolina. Conversation occurring between Laura Rodriguez and a slew of Gotham players. Rodriguez is venturing out to have a quick chat with her AR. Still discussing it on the far sideline. Monahan did well to get it into space. And while we're showing you the replay, they do give them the goal. And it looks like on the replay there, it might have been Purse who got the boot on it. It was. So Purse gets credit after all that. It was a goal. It wasn't a goal. It is a goal. It's two to two with two from Purse, two from Dabinia. Wild half hour. Now you can continue with what you were going to say as far as the more goals to come in this one. There is going to be more goals, and I'm going to continue to say it. Yes, we're only 2-2. I could see this game with, with four goals on either side because of the amount of space. Again, this build-up play comes down that right-hand side on the width, like I alluded to. That is where the space is going to be in this game. But I was just going to say if that goal, goal did get called back, I was going to say that Monaghan should have got her head up, found the late runner of the midfield. But again, absolutely well-deserved goal. And for Purse, just bombing into that box. Again, jumping back to the internationals and what they add to both of these teams. McDonald down to Dabinia, sitting on a hat trick already here in the first half hour. Dabinia chips it. The whistle here from Rodriguez gives everybody a chance to catch their breath. So we had Purse in the 18th, Dabinia in the 22nd, Dabinia in the 24th, and Purse in the 26th. How's that for an eight-minute stretch? And how nice to see it with fans in the stands again here, Kaylin. All the way back to Murphy. Off the outside of the foot, trying to track it down. O'Sullivan. Lee keeps it in. Dabinia forward to McDonald. Williams making the run up the middle. McDonald. Too far. Flag might have gone up anyway as Williams was trying to hold the run. And just 20 minutes in, Dabinia has been absolutely brilliant for me. Never mind her two goals, but her ability to get back, do the defensive work, and then join the attack. But Dorsey, I, I said it time and time again, they've obviously targeted her down this left-hand side, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but time and time again, we're seeing that build-up play beating her in the back line. First end line, sitting on a hat-trick of her own. In the box, taken down, no call. Rodriguez immediately waves it off. 
at a really good vantage point of it, right on top of it, and immediately waves it off. No hesitancy whatsoever. And this comes from Merritt Mathias. I mean, she, yes, she's just torn her ACL. Doesn't even look like it. She looks fitter since coming back. I mean, obviously we saw the goal from her, the game-winning goal from last game. She does clip the ankle, but again, good call from the referee not to give away a PK. Almost a half hour into it. Yes, only almost a half hour into it with, with the action that we've seen enough to fill a 90 minute match and plenty more still to come. Down the right side, Matthias, maybe more here. Centered, taken down by Freeman. All the way back to Murphy for a reset. Pickett leaves that one short. Purse onto it with Lloyd to her left and Monahan to her right. Takes it herself! Almost an exclamation point of a hat trick. And it's the midfield battle that we've been talking about. But again, picking this up in the midfield, driving at this back line. You can see the late run of Carly Lloyd. You can hear her screaming for that ball. I would have loved to have seen a cutback. I like the confidence for this shot, but just to cut that back, allow Carly Lloyd in a little bit more time and space, top of the box, maybe even allow more numbers to join that attack. And very quickly the other way, McDonald. Inside Mace, outward by Freeman. It's just one attack into the next. There's not even any buildup anymore. They're just going straight for it. Lee. Purse has it for Lloyd. Lee takes it again. Out wide for Kawasumi. Dorsey through to Lloyd. Oh. Beautiful ball. Carly Lloyd on her <laughs> left foot. She finishes. The other international that's back in the lineup gets it done now for Gotham. First time since 2019 for Carly Lloyd. And she wastes no time getting back on the score sheet herself. And for Carly Lloyd, it's the ability to read off of the ball that makes her so brilliant. Obviously, again, that midfield battle plays this ball out wide where there's time and space, which allows Carly Lloyd to sneak into that final third. But the ability for her to play, just come across that front line of the center back in behind that fullback channel and the defensive screen, and then to have just the precision to slot this one home near post, past Murphy. I mean, this is why Carly Lloyd is still one of the best players in the world. Yes, I said it here, and I used to be played for Canada, but she was so hard to mark up when, we, when you played for against her in the NWSL or you played against her with national teams because her vision and awareness off the ball. I love the shot of Freya Kuman there too. Last year, no regular season after she takes over first, then Sky Blue, now Gotham. How nice is it to fill out a lineup card? And all right, here's Mitch Purse, here's Carly Lloyd. Three goals from the two of them so far, 33 minutes into this one. And I said it to you earlier on, obviously having the national team players away gives these some of these women an opportunity to get into the starting 11, which they potentially might not. And obviously with the Olympics just around the corner, it gives these players that 90 minute playing experience. But what these national team players add to the team, you, it's just incredible. And we're seeing it here today. I mean, absolutely phenomenal on both ends. That one takes a last touch off of Kawasumi. Both of these coaches, Paul Riley, North Carolina, Frey Koum for Gotham in the build-up to this and chatting with them. It's a fine line they're walking between, all right, it is preseason, we have to ramp up a little bit. And also we want three points, we want to play in May 8th, win the cup. But they are going pedal to the metal in this one. Something on again, Carly Lloyd. Taken down, Rodriguez blows the whistle in a very dangerous area for a free kick as well. And Joe, whoever is telling you that this is just a, a warm up for the regular season is lying to you. <laughs> they want to lift this cup. They want to get, yes, they want to get the 90 minutes because obviously they did have that 10 week preseason where you don't get those 90 minutes. But again, Carly Lloyd, no one around her because she's so good off the ball. Just her movement, the ability to play in the biggest space and then to have the ability to take on two or three players and get this foul really close to goal. 
We've been spoiled already with this first half. Five goals, 35 minutes in. And now Cujo stands over a free kick in a very dangerous spot. Cujo curls it. Oh, oh, brilliant save by Murphy. Could this game have anything more? I mean, brilliant save, brilliant set piece, brilliant goals on both ends of it. And I don't think the goals are done yet. You keep saying that and sign me up. Have I been wrong? <laughs> have, have I not. been wrong? You have not. Sign me up. This game already making its very strong case for game of the Challenge Cup. And we're only about at the tournament's halfway point. After tomorrow, we will officially be across the halfway point for well, the Challenge Cup. We can say it's the game of the Challenge Cup, but it's also really sloppy defending on both ends because the game is so opened up. Brilliant goals, yes, but no defending whatsoever on either side because of how the systems of how they are playing. But I'm here for it. Again, replay, Cujo over the ball. Absolutely brilliant defensive midfielder has been phenomenal for them. And then she decides, you know what, I'm going to go for goal. But this is, again, going back to players coming into the lineup, a brilliant save. I don't know how many times I can say brilliant tonight. <laughs> need to Google another word. Official word of the night. But not in any way <laughs> incorrect. I mean, like you said, five goals, 35 minutes. If you want to pick on something, though, like you said, the defending, and I'm sure at halftime, Brea Coom, Paul Riley, they will probably focus on the defending more than the offense. More here, maybe Murphy. Wise to it. Because that is the nature of a coach. You want to figure out what is wrong and fix what is wrong. Uh, good job. Quick applause for the offense, but they will want to correct the defense. And definitely, and I think obviously defense comes down because they are pushing so many numbers on offensively, getting numbers into the attack. I mean, looking at North Carolina with Zabinia Mace, even though Sullivan joining that attack with Williams and McDonald, it leaves them very vulnerable at the back. So when you do go into the locker room, you need to dedicate and delegate who sits in and helps screen off the front because, again, fullbacks are super important. So you need that back triangle switched on defensively and having that vocal communication to your front runners. These teams not disappointing at the top of the Eastern Division clash here. It's only the second game out of four for both of these teams, but with the way the rest of the group has taken shape, if either team comes away with three points, they're in sole possession of first place. Washington three points through two matches. So if either team, again, able to take all three of the points inside track to the May 8th title game and not disappointing as far as top of the table clashes go. And I think if you're you're Gotham in this match, obviously you go into the locker room at 45 with, if you are still in the lead, who knows? Because there could be three or four more goals before half. But do you bring off another defensive midfielder like a McCall Saborny to, to sit in and just change your system and keep that three points? interesting to see as you as you mentioned what the coaches do in the second half because again while they try to play it down and say it is preseason you know that Coom and Riley this isn't preseason it's a lie I played for Paul Riley it's a lie he wants to win he wants to win matches And these players do as well. I mean, with such a long offseason, such a long preseason, this isn't a tune-up match for a regular season for any of these players on the pitch. This is, we want to lift that title. We want to be the second team to lift that title. And we want to go into the regular season really proving a point to other teams that, you know what, we've won this tournament and we're here to win the league as well. well that's what Houston Dash used it as last year. Some people perhaps surprised with what they were able to do and they announced themselves. They are not a force to be taken lightly and we will see that as we go along and, and into the regular season this year. Good, Kathy. I want to say the game has died down a little bit ever since the Lloyd goal, but with the way the first half has gone, that could change on a dime. Have either of these coaches tweaked anything to your eye since Lloyd scored that goal as we near the halftime interval? No, it's players fatiguing. Obviously, all the players on the front foot, pressing high up the pitch, getting the attacking threat. The team parts sp start to open up, so it's the defensive recovery runs that you're having to make. So again, naturally, the game is going to let a, let a little bit of air out of the tires, and we're seeing it here. Dabini, a 50-50 ball. One on the far side by Didasco. 
Purse with Monahan to her right. Gets it back. Options getting forward for Gotham. Harley Lloyd directing traffic. Purse takes it herself. Takes a slight deflection. Corner kick incoming here in the 40th minute for Gotham. Chance for each of these teams to catch their breath here for a moment. Paul Riley looking on. Dorsey with the assist to Lloyd for goal number three. Sends in the corner. Right into the waiting hands of Murphy. McDonald. Keeps it in, dropping deep after the corner. Gets it forward for Dabinia. Dabinia hopeful that Alin Williams or Haley Mace was there to get on the end of that one, but only in for Didi Haricic. And I don't mind this from Murphy, trying to play quick. Obviously, they're a goal down. But again, sometimes you need to just slow the game down and someone to put their foot on it. She finds uh, McDonald's just on that touchline, gets the ball, obviously sees Dabinia going forward. But again, there's just not enough gas in the tank at this moment to play like that for 90 minutes. So can you have a player of O'Sullivan to live on the ball a little bit, start hitting the switches, allow your fullback to join the attack so you can really start to take control over the match again? Almost able to keep it in, but not quite Carson Pickett. And Carson Pickett, uh, she did not play last year either the Challenge Cup or the Fall Series, but continued her tremendous advocacy work off the field for limb difference awareness. April is Limb Difference Awareness Month, and since we last saw her uh, in 2019, in 20 games with Orlando, she's worked with Nike to develop the Phantom GT Fly East boots with a fold-down heel and wrap-around strap in place of laces to help those with limb differences. So doing well on the field and off the field. On the far side there, Carson Pickett. the noggin of Carly Lloyd. North Carolina sitting on the ball a little bit more. As you mentioned, O'Sullivan with it now. Surveying her options, taking her time in no rush. You get the sense almost these teams can sense there was a break coming at halftime, but still pushing for more here. North Carolina trying to draw level before the half. Over the top, Dabinia. Excuse me, that was Pickett getting up on the far side. And this is much better from North Carolina. I just touched on this point, having O'Sullivan live on the ball, switching the ball side to side, which allows naturally your fullbacks to get higher up the pitch and not have to stay back so defensively because of that transition. We obviously saw Matthias tucking in a little bit inside, finding O'Sullivan, and then Pickett allowed to get forward down that left-hand side. Vinia with two goals, now looking to supply and assist here from the corner. Crowd around Haricic. Dabinia in, Harichich punches, Monahan clears. Pickett will take it from the other side. The service. Back side of the box, headed away by Lewandowski. McDonald was waiting for it. The veteran Lewandowski didn't let it get there. Still with it, taken down, borderline of the box, and Rodriguez says outside. Inches, but outside nonetheless. That's about as close as you can get to the edge of the box without it being a penalty. And she's called a good game. I mean, again, you can see North Carolina trying to play a little bit quicker. Right call for me, foul comes outside the box, but you don't want to give away silly set pieces in and around your box, 43 minutes into this match. Again, you're leading the game. So comes down to sloppy defending, but that's what happens when the game is so open. You start to fatigue, you mentally switch off again. Earlier on in the season, a lot of players haven't coming back in from international duty, and then a lot of players not having that 90 minutes under their belt. Gotham opened the scoring, then two from Dabinia, and then another two from Gotham, back and forth. 
Is there one last turn before the halftime interval as North Carolina looks to draw level? I'm told there'll be three minutes of stoppage time in addition to the one minute of regulation that we do have. Dabinia, back post. So oh, just whiskers wide, Lynn Williams there as well. It looks like she let it go because she almost thought it was going into the back post herself. I thought it was going in. I mean, Dabinia, for me, player of the match for North Carolina. She's been all over the pitch, both in the attack, both the defensive work, and then again on set pieces. Again, told there'll be three minutes of added time in a half that has had more action than you could honestly hope for. And you knew it going into the game, though. When, when both midfield or both teams are playing with so many midfielders condensed in the space, it's only naturally that you have so much space on the width, and the game is going to open up because the amount of work both sides have to do. Kaylin, if I would have told you 3-2, you would have said a ah, full-time score, maybe. No, no, I would have said that in the first half. I, I said there was going to be a lot of goals in this game. I don't know if I said it out loud, but I am saying it out loud. I did say it in my head. <laughs> But what I, what I will say is both managers going into the locker room won't be happy defensively. Far too sloppy. Defenders jumping in. But again, naturally that happens when your midfielders start to join the attack. Your fullbacks get caught out of position because they do create those overloads. It'll be interesting to see what both managers do going in at halftime. And Paul Riley might be especially unhappy because even though they took the three points against Washington, the one thing that he harped on was he didn't want to see the game quite that open defensively. He didn't want to give up those two goals the way they did. And so he was unhappy with the defense the first time around, and now three goals again here in this half. Yeah, five goals in two games, it's not good enough, especially for someone like Paul Riley, that in training sessions, that's what he works on. Defense wins games. Yes, we love to attacking style football. We love playing out of the back. Lynn Williams in the box. Turns around, but Freeman there to clear it. But at the end of the day, he hates getting scored on. So I would hate to be a player in his locker room at halftime. Mandy Freeman has been very strong defensively for Gotham. Again, in a half that has had plenty of offense, one note to pick on defensively is Mandy Freeman has been very strong. Long throw coming from McDonald. Flicked on, near post. Back out to McDonald, about 90 seconds remaining here in this first half. Center of the box, headed away, Lewandowski. Matthias, can't get to it. Sent back in. Base, foot race against Lewandowski. Just gonna be out for a throw. And Debris, we're seeing far too many mistakes from her in this match. The last match, hardly any, didn't put a foot wrong again at fault for one of those goals. And then again, just not hitting the proper pass in that final third. In this first half, 10 total shots from Gotham, five on target, three in the net. Six shots, three on target, two in the net for North Carolina. It seems like Gotham will be clear of giving up that back-breaking last-minute goal in the half. In possession here of the throw in the attacking third with about 10 seconds to go. You imagine they won't concede, but can they find one more? Maybe one last opportunity here through Monaghan and Lloyd. Falls for Kawasumi, but cutting it out. The back line. North Carolina. Halftime whistle from Laura Rodriguez. Take all the time you need, players, fans, broadcasters, anybody watching at home to ooh, catch your breath. Three goals for Gotham, two for Purse, one for Lloyd, two goals for North Carolina, both from Dabinia, and an incredible first half here from Montclair State University in the 2021 NWSL Challenge Cup. Top of the table clash between these two teams. They both want it, you can tell. I'm very excited to get the second half going here in a little bit. If there's any more action in the second half, well, we have already gotten all we could probably hope for in the first. But take a break, come back, and that concludes the first half of play. We'll be back with more of the NWSL Challenge Cup presented by Secret Deodorant.
time here on the campus of Montclair State University between Gotham FC and North Carolina Courage. Joe Malfa still here alongside Kalen Kyle. And Kalen, we're near the halfway point of the 2021 Challenge Cup. Before we look at the upcoming slate, let's take a look at the week that was here in the Challenge Cup. And I mean, let's start off with this game. Orlando Pride versus Gotham. Absolutely incredible. It took 80 minutes to get on the score sheet, but I'm going to start with this. A hand, unlucky handball in the box, but you want a goalkeeper to step up big. If you were living under a rock, here you go. Ashlyn Harris off her line, makes a massive save again, stepping up huge for this back line of Orlando Pride. But again, two internationals on this play, getting beat. Ali Riley here, and then on the back post, Krieger, make no mistake, you have Paige on, sitting on that back post from Gotham. 1-0 is how that score will hold. And now 1-0 is going to be a recurring theme here for a couple of the matches last week. Great matches they were. We go to Washington and Louisville for the next one. Uh, and I'm a big supporter of both of these teams. What racing is doing is absolutely incredible. I mean, look at here, the confidence and just the precision to try to get this one on target. But this is what you love to see from an expansion team. And then Washington and being so threatening in that final third. We're seeing it time and time again of just how dangerous they can be. Michelle Beto's coming up big, but it was this build-up goal, which was absolutely incredible. I mean, Trinity Rodman, a goal in her first game, an assist in her second game. I've been hard on Sanchez, but she makes no mistake putting Washington up 1-0. Rodman, one of the young stars in this league, shining brightly here in the Challenge Cup. Morgan Weaver, another one, and she had a big impact in the Portland-Chicago match. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Portland. I'm a big fan of this woman right here, Kalia uh, Watt. I always call her Ohio. I was about to there, but I caught myself. She's just absolutely incredible on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, she's absolutely fantastic. But Morgan Weaver, she has absolutely excelled with this Portland side, getting on the inside shoulder of the center back and having the precision to slot this one pass to make Portland up 1-0. Absolutely incredible from her. Showcasing why she is the number two pick in the draft. And this one, Rain Houston, a result that made Portland very happy. Yeah, Portland fans, Portland supporters, Portland players were watching this one. And again, it, it, there wasn't any great opportunities in the final third. Shots coming from outside the box on both ends. You're never going to beat a goalkeeper in this league because of the caliber of keepers. So this one does stay nil-nil. Opportunities laid on in this match we're seeing here. But again, goalkeepers making the difference in this match. That The week that was here in the Challenge Cup, but we have plenty more to come. We take a look at the upcoming schedule over the next couple of days. And Kaylin, I know you're probably going to say all of these, but which of these sticks out to you? Well, you took what I was going to say. <laughs> more to come. We take a look at the upcoming schedule over the next couple of days. And Kaylin, I know you're probably going to say all of these, but which of these sticks out to you? Well, you took what I was going to say. <laughs> all of them. But this is the OL rain. I mean, that one's tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. And then obviously Washington, because they're so dynamic in that final third against a struggling back line of Orlando. Plenty to come here in the Challenge Cup, including half number two of Gotham FC and North Carolina Courage. Take a look at highlights and stats from the first half of this one coming up in a few moments. Let's take a look at the first half highlights brought to you by Secret Deodorant and Kalen, our incredible production staff, had plenty to choose from from this first half. I hope everyone had an opportunity to grab a drink and settle their nerves because I haven't even been able to catch my breath yet. I mean, it, it's been absolutely dynamic on both ends. But again, I said it early on, when you're playing tight midfields on both ends, bad defensive errors here. Purse, make no mistake, slots herself back into the lineup after being away on international break, takes on the defender. Again, bad defending, sloppy defending, debris stepping when she shouldn't. She had the cover, she had the support. Allow your midfield fielders to get back but again going up early 1-0 and then getting it right back and then some as you'll see in a moment Dabinia uh, yeah Dabinia she's been all over the pitch both in the attack both defensively again cleaning up the mess in the midfield the space where did I say it on the width Jess McDonald has been absolutely brilliant down this right hand side puts this one in sloppy clearance Dabinia unmarked in the box she's never missing this one that was the getting it back. And here's the and then some from Dabinia. Yeah, and then some. So again, Dabinia playing in the right spot. This little cheeky around the corner play. Where do they play the ball? Out wide, Jess McDonald down this right-hand side. Gets her head up. Again, this back post run, absolutely brilliant from Dabinia. No one picking her up because of that mate, late midfield run. It's extremely difficult because does your back line pick her up? Does a midfield need to track? But Gotham were not done. Ball in over the top from Carly Lloyd. Absolutely brilliant touch. Gets around her defender. And again, this one had to get looked at because 
Was it offside? Wasn't it offside? It wasn't to the referee. Again, first getting on the end of this one. The goal will stand. And it's like a infomercial that you see on TV at like 11 p.m. But wait, there's more here in this first half. <laughs> there really is. And, and this comes down to the space on the, the width again. The, the calmness here, allowing the build up play through the midfield. But it's Carly Lloyd. I mean, she's absolutely incredible playing in between those tight spaces. I said it again, her vision and awareness both on and off the ball slots this one home. Someone else coming straight into the 11 after being away on international break. Lloyd. That's how it looked visually. Here's how it looked statistically in that first half. Yeah, and statistically, it, it, was, it was pretty even. It was just bad defensive mistakes. Obviously, that midfield, that diamond midfield playing, that box midfield. So it'll be interesting to see, does Gotham come out, change tactically because they are up a goal? Or do they continue to push on, try to get another go-ahead goal to make it, maybe make it 4-2? Because I know Paul Riley is not switching his box midfield. You've had about 10 minutes or so to take a break. You have a couple more minutes. We'll be back with the second half of action here in a few moments on Paramount+. Plus. Joe Malfa back alongside Kalen Kyle. Mitch Purse a little bit gingerly walking back out onto the pitch as we're set to begin half number two after a wild first half between Gotham and North Carolina. Something to monitor as this half goes along as Purse still stays out there. Yeah, and again, they're, they're leading right now 3-2. I still think that there's more goals to come in this match, but... Again, on both sides, not good enough defensively. Three goals in just four minutes. Too many defensive mistakes. Too many players switching off at the back. And fullbacks getting caught out. Midge Purse hurt that ankle on a challenge in the box a couple of minutes before she scored the first of her two goals. So since she got injured, two goals. And now still walking gingerly. So something to keep an eye on. Again, with two more matches still to go for them, followed by a regular season. Something Freya Kuhn may be careful with. A handful of subs coming for North Carolina. Diane Caldwell in. Kelly Kurtz in. And Kristen Hamilton, the last of the three subs for North Carolina. Back underway here in Montclair, New Jersey. Joe Malfa alongside Kalen Kyle. Five goals in the first half. Three for Gotham, two for North Carolina, and three subs to begin the second half from North Carolina. What kind of statement does that make from Paul Riley? I mean, I wouldn't want to be in that locker room at halftime because that's the statement it makes. It's not good enough from Paul Riley's team defensively. Dabinia trying to get it right back out for a goal kick. Meredith Speck, Skylar Debris, and Haley Mace, the three who give way for North Carolina. I was keeping there to get those names to you. So three out, three in. Lynn Williams was in, stays in, now sprays out wide. Back side of the box. Carson Pickett. Back to Speck. Nobody charging there. It's easily corralled by Didi Harichich. And just going back to your point with the subs that Paul Riley has made, two in that back line. It goes back to my point, defensive, not good enough. And you could really see Gotham of where they wanted to attack, find the wits, try to find Carly Lloyd popping up the front. But it comes down to a lack of communication from that back line. I misspoke a moment ago. I said Speck was out. That is Kerry Rocero who is out. And it makes a huge statement. Taking two center backs off, you rarely see that happen. Never mind two subs in your whole back line with full backs involved with that. Maybe you see that in the midfield or up top, but rarely two center backs get subbed out at the same time in a game. He's really setting the standard and proving a point right now. Williams trying to get it back, but Cujo steps right in again. That one always high.
Skyler Debris, Carrie Rocaro, and Haley Mace out. Diane Caldwell, Kelly Kurtz come in, as well as Kristen Hamilton. That one caught up in the feet there of Caldwell, her first bit of action. Kawasumi. Kelly Kurtz forward to McDonald. You see McDonald now on the left side with Williams on the right side, a switch from what we saw early on, but those two will interchange throughout the half and it already seems like Lynn is coming back to the left with McDonald going back to the right. Pickett, centers. Lewandowski able to clear right in front of Dabinia. Caldwell gets it into Pick it, and now cleared by Harichich. Some dicey moments in the first couple of minutes here from Gotham as they're on their heels with North Carolina pressing forward. But you can already see the, the substitutes of North Carolina, especially two center backs. I've, I've in for McDonald, and she leaps, finds it. In front of Harichich, both players down. The goal scored by McDonald, but immediately crowd goes hush. Both players down, McDonald, excuse me. She all right, it seems. Back to her feet. Harich is still down. I think how both players were on the ground, it, it made us all kind of hold our breath a little bit. A, a, you never want to see players down on the ground, but just how Jess McDonald, Jess McDonald is not someone that's easy to go down. But where does this start? Spec in this midfield winning it. We weren't really seeing that in the first half. And then Jess McDonald just going up big, strong. It's the shoulder to shoulder contact. At first, obviously with how both of these players hit the ground and stayed there for a little bit, we thought maybe a head injury and neck injury. Thankfully, neither. That was just a hard shoulder to shoulder collision. But this actually starts, this build up play starts with North Carolina. The two substitutes coming in through this back line, Caldwell and Kurtz, playing higher up the pitch, winning that first phase where we weren't seeing it in the first half. The two center backs dropping far too deep, far too early, which is which wasn't allowing the midfields to stay close to the front runners. Lee trying to get it back now for Gotham. Out wide. Sent in by Purse into the awaiting mitts of Murphy. The two of us, we were just ready to carry on talking. It didn't seem like there was anything there until all of a sudden McDonald leaps in front of Harichich, who was a bit slow off her line and makes her pay. Quick getting it level here in the second half. And you could feel it coming. And obviously Paul Riley went into that locker room and probably no one else in the world would want to be in that locker room because I know exactly what is coming out of his mouth. Um, but again, it lights a fire under players. And the substitute that he made is really proving a point. You never see two center backs get subbed at the same time. But what I do like is Caldwell and Kurtz were there for the job. They've started very well, extremely well. You can see how organized they are. You can see the cover and support. You can see them absorbing the front runs of Purse, which we weren't seeing earlier on. Lloyd out wide. Kawasumi slipping there, Monahan. And it's that absorption of the run that we've just seen here with, with Caldwell dropping off, absorbing the run of Monaghan, and then collecting the ball, starting the attack. This, this attack for North Carolina starts with this back line because when you play that box midfielder, you want the numbers a little bit closer, higher up the pitch, which allows your fullbacks to create those overloads. And Kaylin, I'm coming to you for lottery numbers tonight because before this game, you said there'd be a lot of goals while we were chatting off the air during halftime. do not tell them who I said that was going to get the go-ahead goal. I did say it was going to oh, get not, tied I'm not going to spoil it. I'm Don't not going to spoil it. Don't give them a spoiler I'm not going to give them the spoil. <laughs> I'm just going to say that while we were talking off the air, you did say that North Carolina, you felt, mm -hmm. would come out and tie it up very quickly. I won't say what's coming next because you've been right with everything so far, and I don't want to spoil it, but... But it's been, it's because I've been in the locker room when you do have the head coach of Paul Riley. When it's not good enough, he's going to let you know. 
know, but he's going. He's not afraid to make the tactical changes, and he doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care if you're a World Cup winner. He doesn't care if you just came back from international breaks. He wants to win games. So he's not using this tournament just to get playing minutes. He's using it because he wants to win the cup. And that substitute. Lloyd headed back, and the flag goes up in the end. And the substitutes that he's made has proved that point. Now, the lottery numbers I'll keep off the air as well, so nobody <laughs> else takes them from me. That'll be mine tonight. Quickly to Purse, sitting on a hat trick, taken down. No call. Play on for Rodriguez. Kelly Kircher, first bit of action. Been brilliant, both of them. Absolutely brilliant, defensively and offensively. Williams on a long run. In the middle, McDonald. Williams, who's it off of last? Lewandowski thought it was off of Williams' last pleatser case, but it is a corner kick. And where does that attack come from? Again, the center backs. And, and this is not easy to do, have, switching out two center backs and having the camaraderie that they do, winning those tackles, absorbing runs, and starting the attacks. Both last of these attacks have come from the two center backs from North Carolina. Davinia out there for the corner kick. Here at Pitzer Field on the campus of Montclair State University. Temporary home until Gotham moves over to Red Bull Arena. Dabinia sent in, ball loose and cleared by Lewandowski. 50-50 ball and slipping and handling it was Kurtz. Gotham preparing a substitution next opportunity they have. Estelle Johnson will be checking in as that opportunity has already arisen. And Mandy Freeman checking out. So one of the defenders in that first half who we spoke very highly of in a half that had a lot of goals, Mandy Freeman, her night ending in the 55th minute. I hate to say it, you spoke highly of her in the first <laughs> half. I thought she made a couple defensive errors, just was caught out. And again, this is proving my point, you're bringing in someone like an Estelle Johnson th that adds that leadership and just adds that ability to be that playmaker on the ball and that vocal communicator as well. Sorry to throw you under the bus well, there, Joe. Hey, that's why I gotta leave the analysis <laughs> to you. Lynn Williams takes it down. Stepping Cujo. Now, we both agree she had a great she, first half. 100%. We will agree on that. She was absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. But I, I'm interested to see if a substitute does come at some point for Gotham, bringing on someone like a McCall Zerboni. She's got that leadership. Obviously, this was her old team. She's played for Paul Riley for many, many years. Uh, played for him in, in Portland, then obviously Western New York, and then at North Carolina got traded last season. So it'd be interesting to see if they bring someone like her in that can really control this midfield when the game is tied 3-3. Pick it. North Carolina really settling in here to start this second half. McDonald, out wide to Pickett on the run. Williams waits in the middle. Pickett chips it, headed down. Up to Didasco to clear, and Haricic finally gets it away. And we're seeing more of the attack coming down this left-hand side with Pickett. We really saw it on the right-hand side with Mathias, but this comes down to putting two center backs in where you have the confidence. The, the fullbacks know, I'm not going to get beat because I have that cover in support. Monahan takes it herself by O'Sullivan across Ooh. in for Purse just misses still alive and Murphy dives to it the courage back line wanted the flag it never came and Purse that close to a hat trick and, and this is a brilliant ball I mean Monahan she's been she's been fantastic something out again maybe from Lloyd steps by the defender Lloyd picks up her head takes it herself that one just a board stainer and it's been interesting to see. We saw in the first 45 just the momentum shifts. The game starts opening up. Players start to get the fatigued. And then, again, coming out into this next 45, obviously North Carolina making three substitutes, two in the back line, which you rarely see. That momentum shift again. But Gotham just being defensively sound, not getting too pulled out. You have a player like Carly Lloyd that can really settle that midfield. And you mentioned the two center back subs for North Carolina. The one sub used by Gotham, also a center back. Mm -hmm. So three of the four center backs we've seen in this match to start yep. are not in anymore. Because defensively, it just hasn't been good enough on either end. But it comes down to that midfield and how they're playing. Obviously, the box midfield versus the diamond leaves you exposed, gives the, the width for the other team to play in. 
Pickett. Davinia coming for the overlap. Pickett uses it, and line. Can't get it past Didasco, but another corner earned for North Carolina. O'Reilly looking on. Set to be corner number four for the Courage. And this is one thing I do love. Obviously, it's not a full stadium, but you can hear the coaches keep it alive, get this into the mix, and get that second and third phase. Davinia with the first brace of the tournament. Now looking to serve it up. Low to the front post and out for a goal kick. That was the highest scoring half we've had <laughs> of the Challenge Cup so far with five goals. We have had one, a couple that have had three, but that the highest at five. Already one here in the second half. Oh, six brilliant and, tackle. Six and all split right down the middle. Dasco finds feet. Back to Lee. Nice interchange. Monahan in space, but the flag goes up. Monahan wasn't so sure of it. Having a quick chat on her way back up the pitch with the AR as Freya Coombe talks things over as we approach the hour mark. Joe Malpa here alongside Kaylin Kyle at Montclair State University for this match between Gotham and North Carolina. Team's tied for first in the East Division. Either team comes away with all three points inside track to the May 8th title game here in the 2021 Challenge Cup. The tie makes things interesting atop the table. A tie would mean both these teams have four points and it would be the result that Washington is rooting for. Washington with three points through two matches as well here in the East. They play tomorrow. And Joe, this is probably why I'm not a manager. Obviously, I've played with McCall Zerboni. I think she's absolutely an incredible midfielder. She hasn't traveled. So this is why I am not a manager, because you can't bring someone that's injured off the bench to add to this game, which I think obviously could potentially hurt Gotham moving forward, because I think she would add so much to this side. McCall Zerboni, part of that trade that sent Haley Mace, who has now since come out of the game, started tonight for North Carolina, brought Mace North Carolina. Would have been interesting to see them both taking mm -hmm. the field, uh, seeing where we are now two years removed from that trade. And I think it, it would be a really interesting partnership as well because you have Cujo that, that does that dirty work, that defensive midfield, tough, gritty, both sides of the ball. Now, McCall does that as well, but she can live on the ball. Monahan, Purse sitting on a hat trick on her right foot. Purse almost finds the hat trick, wrong side of the netting. And she's just such a dangerous player. The ability to get behind. I mean, she is nursing her ankle as well, but still the ability to, to shimmy this one left, then go right. But what I will say, I'm going to go back to my point with Kurtz and Caldwell. The positioning pushes Purse out wide, takes away that shooting angle, and really forces her. She's got to hit a worldie for that to go into the back of the net. So again, fair play to both of the center backs just being switched on defensively. And if she is still nursing that ankle, as we've seen her a couple of times walk gingerly, good luck to the rest of the league oh, if she's 100% healthy. Forget about it. Imani Dorsey down the left side. Monahan lets it run by, foot race. One out by Merritt Mathias, back to Murphy. Beck and O'Sullivan have been calming presences in the middle of the midfield here in this second half. And it's O'Sullivan with it now. Good dummy there. Up to Williams. Ooh. Heavy tackle and too heavy, says Rodriguez. And I'm not sure about this. I know I'm usually go against referees when I was a player, now since I'm a commentator. But for me, this is just a hard, good, clean tackle. I want to see the replay because I might eat my words here. But again, brilliant little turn. Does win the ball. Yes, does she come through the back? 100%. But does win the ball. For me, not a foul. This is a clean tackle. It's strong. Yes, it's hard. Yes, there is pressure coming through the backside. But again, wins the ball first. 
A borderline one sets up North Carolina with a free kick. Right on the edge of where you'd like to shoot from. This is one where you maybe wanted a few yards closer to make the decision easier or a few yards further back to make it easier to cross it in, but to be determined if they go for the shot or the cross. A couple of players standing over it. Haricic sets up the wall. Three players over there. Pickett, Dabinia. Quick touch, chip in the box, headed away. That's something off the training ground, almost works. And I've seen this off the training ground. Obviously, Paul Riley it loves working on little cheeky set pieces in and around the box, like you alluded to, maybe a little bit too far to hit or maybe a little bit too close. So I've seen this time and time again. He always comes up with something crazy for the season. Again, this one almost comes up, but I love it. I love that they have the confidence to do this in games. Nearly pays off, still level. In a back and forth game, it was 1-0 Gotham, 2-1 North Carolina, 3-2 Gotham. And now here we are, 3-3. The goal by McDonald to start things off here in the second half, just a few minutes in. It was a scary moment. McDonald, Haricic both immediately go down. And again, you never see McDonald ever go down. I mean, she, I've seen her in a lot worse tackles, so that, that made me hold my breath. I didn't say too much too quick because you never want to see a player go down, especially someone like a, a, both players, but you never see McDonald on the pitch. Pick it more centrally here. Looking over the top for Hamilton. Dabinia takes it. And Cujo right in the thick of things once more. O'Sullivan takes a deflection. Falls to Pickett, taken away by Lloyd, who muscles through. Wanted the advantage, never got it. She continues still. But that one's coming back for a quick little free kick. And this is frustrating as well. We've seen we've seen two calls that the referee, for me, has gotten wrong. One top of the box. I think it was a clean tackle. And then again, Carly Lloyd. This is where you need to let the game go. Gets by the first defender, gets by the second defender, and then you have two players in front of her ready to get in behind this back line again with North Carolina pressing on. Both fullbacks were in the attack. So that's a 2v2 at the back. Great goal scoring opportunity or a counter attacking opportunity. And Lloyd, one of the strongest, fittest, most physical competitors around, you know she wanted to try to power through that. Well, and she did power through it. One, two defenders, I mean, and she still was going. Sullivan pulling the strings in the midfield. Out wide. Williams takes it. Lamani Dorsey there with her. Williams not on the same page there. Looking for Matthias. Danger averted as Estelle Johnson clears. And it's much better down that left-hand side with Dorsey. I said it earlier on in the first half. She was getting beat a little bit too easily, stepping forward when maybe she needed to hold that line. But obviously, we saw the substitution of Estelle Johnson coming into this match. So maybe just adding that leadership and just the ability to, to allow Dorsey to know that she has that cover and support. Good intercept by Lee. Purse underneath it. Touch takes her wide. Still with Lee. Overlap coming from Didasco to help out. Lee uses Didasco. Cujo threads it through Lloyd a little bit too far. A couple of subs preparing for Gotham. The next stoppage. He's already used three of his as he looks on. Two-time NWSL Coach of the Year. Three-time title winner. Elizabeth Eddy, the first to check in. 
And Evelyn Vien the next. Paige Monahan has had an active day, checks out for Vienne. Eddie's first touch, and it's out for a throw. The two subs immediately looking to hook up there on the far side. Eddie and Vien. And it was Naomi Kawasumi who gives way for Elizabeth Eddie. And bringing those subs in down this left-hand side because North Carolina have been so vibrant with McDonald rolling outside it. I said it in the first half with Dorsey. So again, bringing in fresh legs to really nullify that space down this left-handed side flank. O'Sullivan pivots, gets it back for Kurtz. Out wide for Pickett. Lee finds Lloyd in space. Looking to go through, but too strong for Vienne. Davinia opens up well. 1v4, takes it herself in the shot. Always wide. Ambitious, but when sitting on a hat trick with the game you've been having, why not? Davinia joined the fold for the Courage in 2017. Helped them the titles in 18 and 19 and was the title game MVP in 2019. In minute 70, Joe Malva here alongside Kalen Kyle from Pitzer Field at Montclair State University. Three goals aside here in the 70th minute. Purse and Dabinia both sitting on hat tricks for either side. Over the top, VN. First there in the middle. Lloyd joins the fray. Eddie. Hujo swings things over to the right side. Through Lewandowski. Out to Didasco and more direct. Hujo over the top. Didasco there. Couple of black jerseys in the box. Didasco, good move, chance to get the cross in, takes a deflection. Corner kick for Gotham. And this is much better again, coming down to substitutes at the right time. Uh, Vienna up top, hold up play, allowing players to get forward, and then Eddie joining the attack. But for me, Didasco just getting that fullback a little bit more involved, absolutely brilliant from her. Cujo, game, she's the woman of the match, man of the match for me, sitting in that defensive midfielder role, absolutely brilliant, both sides of the ball. Dorsey gets it in, sent away again. Eddie, a chance for a secondary ball, blocked again. I'm just gonna correct my statement, after purse. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but wouldn't be a bad option either. No, they've both been incredible. I mean, obviously purse, just the, the attacking threat. This corner sent in low again and take three. Can Gotham get the ball right this time? A couple of corners, a couple of crosses, all have been blocked in the last couple of minutes. This one better. Center of the box, Lloyd taken down, shouts, but no call. And now a call this time as VN takes down McDonald. So a couple of opportunities gone by the wayside for Gotham. Yeah, it just hasn't been good enough from set pieces. Yes, a couple of good quality crosses in, but when it comes down to corners at these moments of the game, those balls need to be quality inside the box at this level. Nobody except the North Carolina bench there to receive that one. So Gotham gets it back in with a throw from Didasco.
Just in case anybody needs a refresher on the format, there is no extra time or anything. Still in the group stage here of the Challenge Cup. Every team will play four matches each. This is match number two for both of these teams. And whoever wins each division will play each other on the May 8th title game. Bien, first touch, takes it too far. Turning spec out to pick it. Cujo again. <laughs> Brilliant. First forced out wide. 1v1. She'll take it. End line. Gets through in the box. Centers oh. it. Almost. Elizabeth Eddy couldn't get oh. the last piece of that puzzle correct. And this would have been absolutely fantastic. Again, Cujo in the midfield winning it, but it's purse for me. This 1v1 ability to get around and get a quality ball, ball into the box, gets her head up and finds the late runner of Eddie. And Eddie just skies this one. You would have loved to have seen her put this one into the back of the net. In the end quickly pounces to this one. It'll be just another goal kick. Shot tallies continue to rise. Each team, how about this? Three goals each, 12 shots each, five shots on target each, right down the line even here in the 75th minute now. And this game, the score line says exactly what the game, sometimes you don't have that. Sometimes the score line doesn't really tell the story of the game. And this 100% has. It's, it's really been, you know, two halves of football that's been very open play, a little bit more so in that first half. Big gaps in the midfield, loads of space to play on, on the width as well, and then substitutes coming in and really changing this game moving forward. And to take it a step further, possession, 50.4% for Gotham, 49.6% for North Carolina. So everywhere down the line, this game about as even as it can be. Does either side have a heroic moment in this one in the last quarter hour? It was Paige Monahan who proved to be the hero in game one for Gotham, no longer in this one, was subbed out for Vien. Matthias Merritt. Got the goal for North Carolina, which turned out to be the winning goal. Couple of Gotham subs coming in as well. Next opportunity. Correct myself, I flipped her names. Merritt Mathias got the game winning goal last time. And what a goal it was, by the way. Cheekiness. If that's not a way to welcome yourself back to the NWSL, I don't know what is. North Carolina in that exciting game against Washington went down 1 0, scored three unanswered. Things got interesting in the end after they conceded late to make it 3 2, but held on for it. Carly Lloyd oh. over the top, VN. A little bit too far from Lloyd. A lot of space for North Carolina into Dabinia. Lewandowski able to cut it out. Hujo. Lloyd getting more involved for the last few minutes. Over the top, perfect ball in for Eddie, but could not quite take it down. And you can hear the coaches on the sideline, 1v1 on both ends, because legs are starting to get heavy. And coaches know at this late of the game, when the game's like this, fouls like this happen and set pieces happen. And now this one. The one on the other side for North Carolina was on the outskirts of a shot. This one, prime territory for Gotham. Usually when you say something, it's the commentator's curse and it goes the opposite, but it, it proves my point here. Heavy legs, sloppy tackles in and around the box. Merritt Mathias doesn't need to go in for this tackle. She's got cover, she's got support, and not by one player, but by two or three. So again, late on in this game, just over 10 minutes to go. On both sides, everyone needs to be a little bit more switched on defensively. Move your feet and have that playing, that cover and support, have that communication to really push you through that 90 minutes. Onomonu checks in, had the assist on the game winning goal for Gotham last time around. And then Richardson checks in for Sodom Lee. These two substitutions for Gotham. Down the stretch, can either of these players make an impact? Joe standing over it. We 
saw her put a beautiful shot on a free kick earlier. Can she duplicate it? She almost oh. does. The earlier one was saved by Murphy on the dive. This one, whiskers wide. I feel like this game's going to put me in hospital. I mean, my heart is pounding a million miles per minute. But again, a br I've been talking about her all game long because defensively, she's been sound in the attack. She's really started the attack for this Gotham side. And then she's been brilliant on set pieces. Yes, hasn't scored from one, but it's been so dangerous. Gotham no longer able to make any substitutes in this one. I know Sullivan's been really quiet in the second half. Again, for North Carolina, their success comes from these midfield four. So for O'Sullivan, she's got to live on it a little bit more. Yes, I know she's just coming back from international break, probably heavy legs, especially with travel. But again, in order to be successful for this team, someone like herself needs to live on it a little bit more. Carly Lloyd forward. Vianne looking for an option. Tried to get it back to Lloyd, but not quite. North Carolina preparing to make its final couple of substitutions as well. After North Carolina able to make those subs, neither team will have any more remaining. McDonald, Oof. almost a second time that she capitalized on a bad back pass in this one, but not to be. That close to being the third brace of the match with Purse and Dabinia already having them. Caldwell to Matthias. Still with some space. Dabinia taken down and a late whistle from Rodriguez. Eddie and Dabinia in a little disagreement on the outcome of that one. And it's a great ball forward. First thought, can we play forward? And, and Jess McDonald, brilliant. Getting on the back shoulder of the center back. This, this is a, a goal scorer, that goal scorer mindset that the ball's going to bobble through. And again, that's why we saw Jess McDonald score on that last bad back pass. Keep it alive, man. Keep it alive. Sorry, keep it alive. Line, Lindsay Agnew checking in for North Carolina. The next opportunity. Dabinia standing over it with Pickett. It's Pickett in the middle. McDonald looking to get there. Can't quite get there. Goal kick. And it's a Paul Riley special on the set piece. Brilliant. Runs over the ball, turns around, takes it herself, catches the defense sleeping of Gotham and just misses that one back post. Appears as if Agnew will be coming in for Carson Pickett whenever the subs will be allowed. Ryan Williams will be the other substitution. And again, barring a last moment change, I'm told it'll be for Merritt Mathias. Dabinia. Space, Williams with her. Dabinia takes it herself for the moment, now finds Williams in the box. Cuts it back, Dabinia can't get there. Little touch maybe from Haricic. Here come those last couple of substitutions for North Carolina. About eight and a half to go of the 90, plus whatever stoppage time we get. Agnew in for Pickett. Ryan Williams in for Merritt Mathias. And Paul Riley, I mean, the substitutes that he's made, his whole back line out of, out of the lineup as of right now. I mean, obviously we saw the two center backs at halftime, now the two full backs. It looks like he's really gonna go for this game um, because they have those attacking threats. They have Williams, they have McDonald, they have Dabinia. Can they get a late goal here? We've had six already. Let's go, 
Nujo almost had it, still fighting for it. Goal kick. Uh, maybe a correction here from Rodriguez, and she is now pointing out to the corner flag. Hamilton in the mix. Dabinia with it in the corner. Crowd around Haricic. Dabinia low front post. Ricochets to McDonald. And she lets it out for corner number two. Low towards the front post again and cut out again. So two corner kicks for Dabinia, unable to produce on either. And he goes long over the top. Long run for Onomonu. Back to Murphy, still pressure from Onomonu. Deflected by Vianne, but no other black jersey there to pounce on it. First place on the line in the East Division if either team could get the goal. As it stands, they'd be tied with four each. There are two, get, two matches. Balls to Agnew. Agnew in space. Has a go towards the far post and just wide. And it'll be interesting to see what uh, Paul Riley does moving forward in this tournament because subbing out your entire back line is really making a statement, especially subbing out your two center backs. But then bringing someone off the bench line, like a Lindsay Agnew that was away on international duty and then really adding to this. We saw her that ball down the line and getting a set piece from him and then having the confidence to take the shot outside the box. Five on the clock. Joe Malpa here alongside Kaylin Kyle with you on Paramount Plus. Heading towards the finish line. Kujo gets the yellow card in that exchange. And again, going back to last year, and we've seen it tonight, in the thick of everything, she's always going to be a, a, a liability to possibly... It, it, it is. It, it's a liability, but I wouldn't call it that. That's a tactical foul. I mean, get it. they're about to get caught, caught out on that counterattack. So that's just a good heads-up play. This is a good defensive midfielder. So, yeah, she picks up yellow cards, but sometimes it is for the betterment of the team. And now yellow cards will not carry over to the title game, but could carry over to match number four if she picks another one up in game three. Delivery in, falls for McDonald. Was it off the hand? No, says Rodriguez. Ball still alive. Dabinia somehow fighting through and now cleared. Onomonu out for a throw. Dicey moments at the back after this one was lofted in. Here's another look at it. Looked like it was off the chest or the hand that was next to the chest at least. No, she's not She's not making herself bigger. If her arms were out wide, yes, that would be a PK. So absolutely fantastic call from the referee to not call that one to the spot. Deflection here sets up Dabinia. Aracic unable to keep it in, says the AR on the far side, out for a corner kick. Couple moments remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, additional time will be kept on the field by the referee. Goal differential, then goal scored. The tiebreakers, if need be, as we go through the Challenge Cup. Dabinia 
Another low ball towards that front post. Three in a row from Dabinia. Yeah, it's not good enough, especially at this level for someone like Dabinia. I mean, she's been absolutely brilliant this game, so I don't want to be too hard on her, but three times in a row. Yes, it's a dying minutes. The legs are going, mentally starting to go, but you got to get it into the mix. This one sent into the mix and headed away. Johnson getting on the end of it. Falling for Lloyd. Battle with O'Sullivan. <laughs> Carly Lloyd not showing any signs of fatigue late in this one. Ball sent in. Dabinia, foot race, Haricic will be able to corral it. Back to Lloyd for a moment. Is that ever disheartening having played against her where it's minute Every 89. Every game's disheartening <laughs> playing against her. <laughs> 80, minute 89 and she looks like she is as fresh as she was in minute one. Yeah, but it's what she does off the pitch. I mean, she's the one of the, I mean, obviously I'm not a U.S. national team player, but just someone that has played against her in the league and played against her against national team. And what I've heard about her, one of the hardest workers in training and puts in the effort off the pitch. I mean, she's always training. Anytime you see social media, and she's not someone to post about it either, like, I'm a harder worker than you. But it shows on the pitch. It shows in those 90 minutes. It shows when she scores the hat trick in a World Cup. I mean, it, it just proves that she is willing to put in more work than other players off the pitch so she can still play at this age. I can't even imagine running at this age. I'm only 32, <laughs> and it looks like there's a piano tied to me when I'm running down the street, my poor neighbors. Carly Lloyd will be 39 this summer and continues to just impress time after time after time. Uh, told there'll be four minutes of added time as we are in minute 90 here in Montclair, New Jersey. If this result holds at the end of the night, the standings will show North Carolina on top on the tiebreakers. McDonald, nobody on the back side. Again, goal difference, then goal scored. So goal differential will be the same through two matches for these two teams, but North Carolina with six goals scored to Gotham's four. And a tie, the best possible result for the Washington Spirit, sitting at home, tuning in, getting prepared for a match tomorrow. They have three points through two games, so you'd have all three of those teams, North Carolina, Gotham, Washington, through three, two games, excuse me, with four points, four points, and three points as the East Division heats up. Into stoppage time now. And that's a blatant handball on Merritt Mathias there moving forward. So again, another missed call from the ref. And, and she's been brilliant all match except for these last three. Obviously, the two in and around the box I, I didn't agree with. And then this one here with Merritt Mathias just using her hand to push this one forward. You can hear the shouting from the benches, and I go back to what you said, Kaylin. Anybody on either team who has told you they don't really care about necessarily it's winning this cup, it's a lie. It's an absolute it's a lie. lie. They say it's preseason, they try to play it down, but when you get out there, the blood starts pumping, you want to win every game I here. think Paul Riley just proved it to us. Subbing out two center backs at 45, that tells me everything I need to know and tells me everything that I'm glad it retired when I did. <laughs> Either team have one last moment of brilliance to set them apart. Five goals in the first half, the most in this tournament, in any half. Lloyd searching for an option. Thought she found it in purse, but left it a little bit too long. Gets it right back, though. <laughs> Side, Eddie out wide. Onomonu on a run. And line, Onomonu in front, flicked off, brilliant! Vien, there's that moment of brilliance I called for. Onomonu inside, Vien up 4-3 for Gotham. And this starts with Carly Lloyd. Yes, she had a missed pass, but then the brilliance, the cheeky back heel in the middle, sending this one out wide, getting around their defender. I don't want to say it, Joe, but I'm going to say it. 
Who's called this game? <laughs> I did. I said this game will end 4-3 with Gotham getting on the score sheet because of a player like Car Carly Lloyd. Not taking anything away from North Carolina, but she's a winner. She goes to the end. Yes, a missed pass. Picks this one back up. The build-up play down this right-hand side. The ability to get around that last defender. Slot this one home. Absolutely brilliant from Gotham. Again, this game has been very evenly matched. I'm not a big statistic person because statistics sometimes don't tell the story of a game, but for this game, it does. And you have to give the credit to Onomono as well. I mentioned that Monaghan, the game-winning goal scorer for Gotham last time, but who gave her the pass in that one? Onomono does it here as well on the right wing. Two very similar goals as well to the one that helped Gotham win their first match. John. Onomono end line in front and finish. I'm telling you, go and cash your lottery ticket and use the numbers I gave hey, you. I told you. Nobody else is going to hear it. You told me. That's it. If I'm you guys want later. the lottery ticket numbers, just DM me. I'm charging 20 bucks. <laughs> you said it every step of the way. You called a, a goal fest. You said when we were talking off air at the half that North Carolina, with you knowing Paul Riley, they'd come out and they'd tie it up quickly. And you said Gotham, late winner. Will it hold up as a winner, though? At least 30 more seconds, depending on whether or not Laura Rodriguez gave any additional time for the aftermath of the goal. And purse taken down. I love this from Davinia. This is, this is a very smart, switched on play. I love that she's arguing with the referee. She knows exactly what she's doing here. Takes a tactical foul because she knows she's in. She knows she's not gonna get back with, with the pace and the power. Gotham just going to dump this one down the field and hope for a whistle. We're past the four given. Again, maybe Laura Rodriguez adds a little more in the aftermath of the goal scored by Yen. Ujo pushes forward again. Whistle coming any moment. Gotham. Perhaps pulling ahead and taking control of the East Division. Just have to see maybe one last attack turned aside if North Carolina can get it forward. Speck. Turn, chipped. Backside. Eddie seeing it out. Final whistle here in Montclair, New Jersey. Gotham with the fans cheering them on. Wins it at the death, four to three over North Carolina. And this was an absolutely brilliant game. I mean, with the midfield battle, playing a box midfield against a diamond midfield, you knew this was going to be a goal fest of a match, and it did not disappoint. Obviously, Paul Riley trying to make a statement, switching out his entire back line throughout of this game. I mean, but conceding six goals in two matches, he's not going to be happy with that. But give credit where credit is due. Carly Lloyd absolutely led this Gotham side. Only the second time Gotham has ever beaten North Carolina. We're watching the NWSL Challenge Cup presented by Seeger Deodorant back in a few moments here on Paramount+. Plus. Incredible match, incredible finish. Joe Malpe here alongside Kaylin Kyle. Gotham wins it four to three in the end. Time for today's play of the game brought to you by Seeker Deodorant. And we know what the answer is here, Kaylin. I don't know the answer. I could have had about eight <laughs> plays of the game. I mean, all the goals were absolutely incredible, but this build up, I mean, absolutely phenomenal. And it's the game winner. So yes, this would be the play of the game, but it's for me, it's the Carly Lloyd, the cheeky back heel in the middle. Absolutely phenomenal. We don't even get to see it all. Yeah. I'm going to have to talk to them about this. But again, Carly Lloyd, everyone on this team went to the dying minutes, didn't take their foot off the gas pedal. Absolutely fantastic finish from Gotham. I need a cold shower because I'm, I'm literally shaking calling this game. It's been incredible from start to finish. And that play of the game brought to you by Secret and the back heel because it was Carly's back oh. heel that set it up and then the VN back heel to finish it. So a wild finish in the end. Purse started the scoring, then two from Dabinia, then Purse and Lloyd, then McDonald and VN. Incredible game all around. <laughs> That's a mouthful to say. It was an incredible game for Gotham, three North Carolina. Gotham sits alone atop the East Division at the end of the night. Can they make it all the way to the May? eighth final we will see plenty of action still to come here in the challenge cup for kaylin kyle and our entire crew i'm joe malfa for more nwsl highlights and analysis 
CBS Sports HQ has you covered. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports in association with the National Women's Soccer League.